Hello and welcome to Queenstown. Yes, I know, just about every country you go to has a city called Queenstown. I guess that's part of being in the English or British Great Britain Commonwealth. Anyway, here I am in Queenstown, Tasmania. Now this place is quite unreal, let me tell you that. It, firstly, just getting to the place, there's this amazing road that just is cut out of the cliffs here. And speaking of cutting out of cliffs, the whole town has big mining structures and holes in the ground and it's just a barren landscape. It is really quite surreal. I want to show you around a little bit. There's a couple of locations I want to shoot at here. So let's just see what we can find. Everything's made out of metal and rock. I think copper was the main thing that they dug out of the ground here. It's got that copper look about it. Everything is brown and gold. It's a good look out here. You can see right over the landscape and that winding road just goes down and down and down from here. Well, this place is absolutely jam-packed full of history. Old buildings, uh, the Queenstown station here. I'm just gonna go and have a look at that because I think there's trains in there. I like trains and the buildings over there, the old pub on the corner, another one down there, there's galleries. And you've got these awesome mountain background over there. I could only imagine what that would be like with a big storm rolling in over the top of that. But today, look at this, the weather's fantastic. Man, oh man, high level cloud, it's actually quite warm. So anyway, I'm gonna go and have a look in the Queenstown station. Let's have a look. We can't beat an old train or two. This looks fantastic. Everything is old, vintage, bikes. You can do a tour if you want. But I'll tell you what, there's something I've noticed just down here. There's a cafe here. I'm gonna go and grab a coffee. It's been a while, so I'm gonna go and get one now. Hi. Hello, could I please have a small takeaway almond latte? Monte Carlo cookies, can I have one of those? Just one of those? You twisted my arm, yes. Mm, have a look at this. And a cookie. Looks pretty good. Mmm, nice indeed. So you can see there behind me an awesome view down the main street of Queenstown. Wow, fantastic. So there's no doubt that this is an absolutely beautiful town to come and visit. But you know, I'm here for nightscape photography and I've got a couple of locations that I've had set in my mind that I wanted to shoot at. And I'll take you there and show you what I had in mind now. So let's go. If you want to see something absolutely amazing, this is the Iron Blow Lookout. It's really difficult to see. There's a viewing tower there, and it's a great big, well, hole in the ground. That's the only way I could explain it. This whole landscape in Queenstown has been mined. So the whole place is literally been dug open. It's a big open cut mine, and it's pretty ugly to be honest but there's beauty in all of these mountains around. You can see the lake in the background there. I reckon that this could be a, an enormous opportunity to shoot a nightscape image. Now, you know, the Milky Way Galactic Core will rise just at the edge of that mountain, come up right over the top of this. My challenge though, to shoot here, is getting it all in, because it's almost a straight down look to see into this 
the, 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 what they call the iron blow. Now I have to say it's not for the faint of heart to go right out the end of this and just look straight over the edge because a lot of people wouldn't cope with that at all because it's a vertical drop right underneath the viewing platform. But it's a gorgeous, well, I don't know if it's a gorgeous color in the sense of healthy, but there's water down there that's a really green color. So who knows what sort of chemicals they've put into that over the years. But nevertheless, it's still a very monumental site here and I would love to shoot it. Yeah, so it's down in that direction where I'd be looking, the lake over there, Milky Way coming up here. That's an easy enough shot to get, but the challenge is gonna be getting something down there. I don't even know if I can, to be honest, because it's basically a panorama that's required to shoot that, because it's very wide, very big. But I don't know if I can get a pano that looks right from this angle right up into the sky. That's a challenge, isn't it? And not only that, there's clouds everywhere at the moment. So am I going to get clear skies here to shoot this location? Well, only time will tell. Now, one of the things I'm always on the lookout for is somewhere to stay, to park my car, camp up for the night, and have a look at this. This is a perfect location. This is Lake Burberry, and it's not that far from Queenstown. And this road here goes along next to the lake. There's quite a few little pull-offs here. There's obviously been camps here. There's campfires all over the place, but no one around. I did see one van way down the end of the street. It's a nice sealed road as well, so it's not hard. But the added bonus here is not only is it a great place to, to park up here and camp for the night, it's right on the water. And there's a perspective down there which I think could make a fantastic Milky Way photo. Well, have a look at this. Ferns everywhere. It's like a wonderland down here. Beautiful and green rocks, trees. It's a great little spot but the water's right over here. So there you go, that's Lake Burberry, facing off towards the east. Milky Way core rising right up over the top of this water. And what I'll probably attempt to do is perhaps shoot along the shoreline here. I wanna try and get as much a bit of perspective. There's a lot of mountains way over the other side. They won't look very big in the frame, probably, especially at 20 millimeter focal length which is most likely the focal length I'll be using. Oh man, it's beautiful down here. Very, very well sheltered. And you can't ask for more than that. And it's right just where the car's parked. Now, it's getting late in the day. There's a fair bit of cloud cover at the moment, but I'm going to wait and see what happens because I think it's going to clear later on. Yeah, I'll have something to eat. Wait for it to get dark and away we go. Now, as you know, one of the things I put a fair bit of time and effort into is what food I'm going to be eating. Now, anyone who knows me would know that is not the case at all. I am not a chef, not a cook, hate cooking, love eating. So I'll go for the fastest, quickest meal to prepare. And tonight we have butter chicken. Now I've had these plenty of times on my last Tassie trip, I was eating this stuff because you can buy it in the supermarket, pre-packaged. All you have to do is take it out of the packet here, pour it into a, a pot like this on top of the jet boil and Bob's your uncle, I've got a meal in about 10 minutes. So let's get into it. Oh, see, I can't even open the packet. Oh, so to be absolutely honest, I make it up as I go along. I just chuck a little bit of water in there and put the heat on and stir it up and hope for the best. But listen, you can't go wrong. Have a look at this, got mountains in the background. Lake just there, beautiful quiet location. What more would you want? Ah, oh, so there you go. Have a look at that. Absolutely magnificent. And the cleanup takes about two minutes. That's what I like the most. 
Okay, well, I'm sitting here in the car, um, just about to go and shoot down at the lake here at my campsite. But I can't take you down there with me because there's some other campers here. I think they've settled in for the night and there's no way now I can walk down there talking to the camera. Um, I just don't feel right about that. So I'm gonna have to just go and shoot that and show you the results later. But um, the stars are coming out. So it's looking good. There's a bit of cloud down lower, but that's not too bad. I'm gonna shoot a pano here and then I'm gonna head back up to the hole in the ground and I'm still trying to work out in my mind how I'm gonna shoot that baby. So anyway, I'll get this shot and then we'll head up there. Oh man, just have a look at that. Stars are out. I'm up on top of the hill. It is beautiful, there's stars everywhere, all the way around the whole sky. So, oh right, I've got to get going. This is gonna be awesome. Okay, well here we are. I've got to try and work out how I'm gonna do this because as you can see in the background, gee, I've got to get my camera over the top of the railing. So that's not gonna be easy, but anyway. Oh, look at that sky. It is magnificent. It is beautiful. All right, let's get going. So I've got some logistical problems here. I've got no choice but to push my tripod hard up against the railing here. Um, but if I do that, obviously I've got to make sure I can get a level tripod to do my pan pano. And secondly, I've got to make sure nothing falls over the edge because if it does goodbye everything um, there's no there's no coming back from that and I'm going to be pointing my camera down a long way here look I've got no idea if this is even going to work because it's it's like the it's like the black hole of Calcutta down there I cannot see a thing so my plan is to do long exposure foregrounds and I'll do them as long as I need to I'll be opening my my uh, aperture right up to f1.8 for this um, and Gee, I'll start with probably one minute shutter speed. I might even go longer than one minute just to get enough uh, signal so I can actually boost it. And then I'm going to be shooting the sky. And what I'll be doing is two separate panos. I'll be doing a pano for the foreground at extremely long shutter speeds, and then a pano, a normal pano for the sky, and then just blend them in. But uh, yeah, it's. <laughs> So the Milky Way Galactic calls over here, but it is moving, it's gonna move up this way. So a bit later on in the night, it's gonna be more above where the water is. So um, I'm just gonna do my, do my thing. I'll do my foreground first and just wait for that. Uh, look, I might even get the tracker out later, it just depends on how I feel, because I'm gonna be exhausted after this. I tell you what, this is, this is working very hard. It's getting cold and I left my gloves in the car I might have to get back to the car anyway because I may have to strap this tripod to the railing. Okay, so here we go. Velcro to the rescue. I've got my grunt Velcro straps over the legs in multiple places, strapped to the railing, as you can see here. So that is going nowhere. It is really firm. And I've even got a Velcro strap around my camera hooked on there. I'm going to be holding it the whole time, but that's where we're at at the moment. So I'm going to start shooting now. Okay, well, I've finished that pano, long exposures. I'm going to now take the tripod off the railing here, put it here, and I'm going to shoot another pano over this side. Then I'm going to get the tracker out. Oh boy, oh boy, it's a busy night, but there is not a cloud in the sky. It is absolutely phenomenal here at the moment. So I better get cracking. I'll tell you what, these Velcro strips are absolutely amazing. So easy to apply and strong. I'll tell you what though, do not wear gloves when you're using Velcro. That's a pain in the backside, I tell you. Look at that, look how easy that is to get off. Wow. I reckon it'd hold my weight. Not that I'm very heavy, but here we go. Get away from the edge. Woohoo, you ripper. 
Okay, I'm getting the big guns out now. Tracker time. Man, I've got some junk up here. I need a tripod. Okay. Alrighty. And the next job is finding my tracker. Oh, in amongst all this stuff. I'm getting the sweat up tonight. I feel like I'm running. I probably am. So I'm aware that there's a possibility that I'll lose the clear sky, so just gotta keep going while I can. I got my Star Adventurer Mini. Have a look at that, baby. Okay, got all the bits. Let's go. Just moved that tripod out, got my tracker tripod here ready to go. I've just leveled it up. Now this is gonna be a bit of a test for the tracker because I'm right up against all these metal railings here and I've got to use a phone app. So hopefully it works, but I'm gonna find out, aren't I? It's not gonna take me much effort to find out if it's not working. So let's just stick that on there and away we go. Okay, so putting my phone up here. Oh boy, it's hard to get in here, I tell you. But as I said, this all this metal around here could be playing havoc a bit with it. Well, it failed um, miserably. I had to move the whole thing back up away from that uh, steel. And I probably knew that, to be honest. So much so that I've got the tracker going now on a timer. And I'm going to have a cuppa because I'm absolutely starving. But it keeps interrupting me because I've got it only set to go one minute shutter speeds. So every one minute, I will get an alarm going off and I've got to go and start it again. It doesn't even give me time to do my tea bag. So I'm not even cold anymore because I've been running like a headless chook all night. That's why I need this cuppa, I tell you. Oh, boy, oh boy. Every minute, I've got to run over and adjust the camera. So I know some of you are going to say the Benro Polaris is the way to go, automate the whole thing. Well, we'll just have to wait and see about that. I'd like to see it a bit more reliable before I go down that track. But hey, who am I to talk? All right. Oh no, there it goes again. This track shots are absolutely beautiful. Wow, so is this Bicky. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a wrap. And speaking of wrap, I am wrapped in the results that I got here tonight. I had to push pretty hard. I had trouble getting the tracker set up only because of the, all the uh, magnetic and whatever interference from that fence and structure down there. But as soon as I brought it back up here into the car park, which is only about 20 metres away from the bridge, no trouble at all. Uh, worked first time with the sky safari app uh, so it's on my star adventurer mini it works fantastically it's such a simple setup nikon z6 hydrogen alpha modified i, I shot the sky with on the tracker with the modified camera because it just looks so good on the back of the screen 20 mil f 1.8 the whole lot was shot 20 mil i shot a couple of different panorama or well, quite a few different panos here so have a look see what you think and uh, hopefully you'll like them as much as I do.
Well, that's it for another episode. Thank you so much for joining me here at the amazing Queenstown part of Tasmania. I mean, just have a look at those rock faces and cliffs all around this place. It is quite surreal, to be honest. But anyway, I'll look forward to seeing you in my next adventure around Tasmania. This place is so awesome. I can't wait to see where I get to next. So, off I go. I'll see you next time.